Welcome to Grit, the Real Estate Growth Mindset Podcast, hosted by Brian Charlesworth, founder of Sisu. Sisu provides growth automation software for real estate. You'll hear stories from real estate thought and technology leaders, team owners, and brokers on how they grew their business in a rapidly changing industry. You'll learn how to transform your brokerage and teams into a high-performing and analytics-driven business so you have a new, durable, competitive advantage against disruption in your market. So let's get right into it. Right. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Grit Podcast. I'm Brian Charlesworth, the founder of CSU and the host of the show. And today, I have a special guest. Just so you guys know, today is my 100th episode. And uh, I wanted to make sure that it was a special, special episode. I actually received in the mail this week my first semi-sponsorship, which you guys will, you guys will get to know what that is uh, on another episode. So anyway, today I've asked my wife, Spring Benson, to be here with me. And uh, just so happens that Sisu was actually built for Spring. So I thought it only appropriate to have her on the show today. This podcast wouldn't exist without her because Sisu wouldn't exist without her. So anyway, about six years ago, Spring asked me to jump in and help her build her real estate business. And that's kind of how Sisu got born, was uh, figuring out how to solve problems that she was having in this business. So anyway, Spring, thank you for joining me on the show today. Thank you for having me. It was sweet, you guys. So He's like, who should I have? We were in Mexico. Who should I have as my hundredth guest? I'm like, well, what about me? Just joking. And then like five days later, he comes downstairs. He's like, you know, I've been thinking about it. That would be good. So anyway, thanks for having me. So we are recording this morning and this episode's going live today. So uh, it is. Yes. So wow. Okay. So anyway, so here we are. I wanted to back up spring. I don't think... Unless people have heard you on your recent speaking circuit, which you are now on, it's crazy how far you've come, but uh, I don't think people have really heard your story. So I want to back up clear to like when you're 20 years old and kind of, are you okay? Are you okay to go there with me? Sure. And I love how all of y'all, you all, everybody goes here with me, you guys. It's interesting, but Yeah. So for those of you guys that don't know or haven't heard this story, um, when I was 20 years old, I um, was dating a gentleman that had, we live in Utah and he had his boat in Lake Mead, which is in Las Vegas. And um, he's like, Hey, let's just go get it for bring it back to Utah for the summer. It was 4th of July weekend. And when we got down there, the generator didn't work. It was in the middle of the night and the generator didn't work. And so he said, Hey, in in the morning, let's go to the gas dock and we'll have the mechanics check it out and see what's going on. And so he, we got to the gas dock that morning and he went and talked to the mechanics and I um, hung out and they put gas in the boat and I took the hose and I like squirt myself down, um, to get my head wet, get my swimming suit. Cause it was like 118 degrees that day. And long story short, when they pushed us off the gas dock, the boat wouldn't start. And so I went downstairs to put away the checkbook. Yes. That's how long ago it was checkbook. And I was like, mm, it smells like gas. And, but at 20 years old, I didn't know that gas fumes exploded. And, um, so right then, uh, I heard him say fire and I turned around, I was downstairs. It was like a cuddy cabin boat and the, uh, entire boat just blew up. And like what I mean, blew up, I mean like loud explosion. And, um, so I ran out and I'm like, I'm burning, I'm burning. And I was burning and I jumped in the water and I swam over to the gas dock and, um, the, uh, when I pulled myself off the gas dock, my skin was literally black, like the marshmallow or the, um, hot dog that gets burnt on the campfire. It was just hanging off. So I spent some time in the burning it, but what you're referring to is that life is so interesting. There's so many things that you can call them circumstances or luck or whatever, but so many things happen in that experience that have shaped who I am today. Um, I could think of a handful of them, but what you're referring to is a couple of weeks in, I was like completely drugged out of my mind because my lungs had collapsed. I had pneumonia. 
Um, I had a blood disease. Like I just like my body was fighting, like all the bacteria from the dirty water, just all of it. And all the sirens went off because my roommate in the burn unit. So I had, I shared a room at one point she was passing away and all the sirens were going off. And I was like, am I dying? Like what the heck is going on? And, um, and the doctor or who knows, I mean, I remember being a doctor, but I don't know, you know, that I'm like, am I dying? And, um, they're like, no, it's your choice if you get a liver die. And so I just literally remember it being like a light bulb moment of like, this is a choice. And, um, so from that moment on, like, um, I was on the mend probably like five days. I was like full on, on the mend and things were working and all that jazz. So I've always had that power of choice. It's always been one of those things. I'm like, mindset is pretty much everything in life. It's gotten stronger as uh, we've gotten older. Like it's more and more apparent of just how much between these two ears control your whole world. Um, but yeah, it was a great lesson to learn at 20 years old. And my body's one big giant skin graph. You can see it where I scar. You can see on here if you're on. Oh, so thankfully for me, spring chose to live. Um, <laughs> Thank but, you to uh, all of you that love Sisu. You <laughs> but but what what uh, you know what's impressive to me? Spring's mindset. Like if you let's just take a plank contest as an example. If she decides she's going to go forever in a plank. Like, don't try to compete with her because she will go forever. <laughs> so anyway, but I just, I just, I just love that example because um, I think life is a choice for, for everything we do. And you guys as business owners listening to this podcast, like you guys have a choice what direction you're going to go. And so now I'd like to talk about that, that messy middle spring. You talk about that quite a bit and seven years ago. You were kind of there when I, when I jumped into your business, you had five agents, as I recall. Yeah. I was in the heart of the messy middle. In fact, the reason you jumped in is because my whole entire team walked out. So, um, yeah, I operated in that messy middle for a long time. I was that typical practitioner still in production. If I really looked at my numbers, the profits were coming from the transactions I was personally selling. I had all the expenses to be able to go to that next level. But again, it kind of comes back to that mindset of, I kept on telling myself, I'm like, I don't want a big team. Like that's a lot of work. I'm good with making X, Y, Z money. And it wasn't until probably about three years ago I was just fried. I mean, it operated uh, about five to six agents and then we'd grown a little bit to about 12. And um, I went to one of my coaches one day and I was just like, I'm done. Like, cause I was being the director of sales, still in a tiny bit of production, but again, the profit margins weren't really there for me to like, I could scale back and sell real estate on my own and make the same amount of money. And I think a lot of team owners know that, especially when they're in that messy middle, they just don't, um, if they know their numbers, they know that. Right. And so it wasn't until about three years ago, I was like, well, either have to scale back or scale up. And my coach just said, spring, do you really see yourself going and sitting at people's kitchen tables every day again? And I'm like, yeah, no, that's not going to happen. So I had to make that choice to scale up because I couldn't do the same dang thing over and over and over. And as you know, definition of insanity is the same thing, expecting different results. Like my business just wasn't progressing. Yeah. So uh, you know, I, we work, obviously, you know this, but we work with thousands of team owners right now. And uh, I think that's the, that's the hardest thing to do is like, how am I going to get out of production? And in my opinion, probably about 20% have, have made that leap. Yeah. What, what's the most important thing? Like once you decide you're going to do that, what's the most important thing to, to get you there? Well, there's two components. One of them, and I, we've talked a lot about this is the mindset. I always say you've got to take the, the realtor hat off and put on the business owner hat. They're two different identities, like somebody who's going to own a, a large team. It's truly a business. So you got, you have to stop thinking about it as a realtor. So that's the number one component. The second component is agent attraction or talent acquisition. It does take agents to sell a lot of homes. And so like I hear all the time, I have a coaching program called scale up. I hear all the time that the, the thought process of more agents means more work. It doesn't. 
it really truthfully doesn't. But if you want to have that predictable income coming in, in your business, that's not a roller coaster because age, some agents have an on month and then they're going to have an off month. Right. But if you have enough agents in your organization, your company doesn't have that roller coaster. Right. So agent attraction, and then just really saying, I'm going to treat this like a business and knowing your numbers. Yeah. Okay. So how do you treat it like a business to know your numbers? <laughs> and we're going to go there because uh, again, Sisu was born thanks to you. So I want to, I want to dive into that. Yeah. So we track all key metrics. Now here's the thing. Like if you chase two rabbits, you catch neither, right? We've all heard that saying. So every single person in my organization has one core metric that we are obsessed about. Now we know our numbers on the other things, but the obsession comes with like us knowing we're going to move forward. So for example, my director of sales, his, his core metric that we track is agent appointments met for a recruiting appointments, which we use the CSU platform, the recruiting platform for that. And then on the retail side, we track appointments met. Obviously we were looking at the conversations agreement side, like we know, but those are like a daily when we report out on our nine nineteen. we do a huddle for 10 minutes at nine nineteen in the morning as a leadership team. That is what he's reporting out. My director of ops, we're looking at lead flow. So we're looking at the leads coming in from all of our aggregates, different systems. And then we're looking at our conversion. I think that we all know this. There's not a lead issue. There's a conversion issue. So we're, we're highly measuring with our Zillow. We just got on Zillow Flex. We're measuring with OpCity, the conversion metrics and the answer rates and things like that. On our agents, again, like I said, we're measuring appointments met. That was a one core metric we felt like that we could hold people accountable to. And what I mean by that is the conversations can be fluffed, the like self-reported data can be fluffed. Right. And so that could be part of it. We also didn't want to say, Hey, you had to make X, Y, Z conversations per week. Cause then my top agent's not going to hit that. And then I have some that are hitting that number and, um, let's say a hundred conversations a week and they're not going on any appointments. So we agreed as a company that we would, we would track appointments met would be our standard. And it was going to be the standard that we lived by. And then the other thing is, is we highly, highly watch Brian, our ROI on all of our lead flow. So we're, we're making educated decisions. We track it um, on a monthly basis and then we're looking at it. Obviously, well, I'll keep something for at least six months, like know that we have to give it a, at least a six month run rate, maybe even longer. We're watching it to see if we double down on it, if it's something that we eliminate, whatnot. And so we're pretty dialed at this point of what, what's coming into our ecosystem. Yeah. And most people don't know how to do that. I remember that first conversation we went in and we had a meeting with your team saying, Hey, you know what, based on our results with this lead source, do you want us to still keep buying these leads or you're going to get a different split? Do you remember that? Yeah. And, um, there's been actually quite a few lead sources that have been, that are very shiny in our industry right now that I've done. And I did one of them for a year and we, we weren't converting them. I'm not saying they don't work because obviously they work because they're highly successful company, but it wasn't working for us. And so, um, exactly that we went in and just said, Hey, we're going to eliminate this, take it as a loss leader. But we've done that on, especially when uh, some of my leads are two, three, $400 a lead. And so having CSU to be able to go and show them like, Hey, you're going to, if you want this to your point, you can have these, but this is going to be the split it got their buy-in instead of them feeling like I was just going in and being greedy about it. Cause I could actually show them the real numbers. I could also show them the conversion ratios of what they were actually doing themselves because CSU breaks it down like them, not as a company, them and agents, agents love our company and they love your company. And at the end of the day, they care about what they're doing, right? They care about their own goals. So it was super helpful. Yeah. I, I think another thing for you to scale to where you are, you always talk about the who's not the how's we do a, we do. A, I know she talks about this because we do a quarterly CSU event mm -hmm. where spring and Justin, wh who is, you know, heads up all of her cells, they come in and, and basically share how CSU assists them in running their entire business. But you talk a lot about the who's, Let's talk about that because I think it's so important that people find that who. 
Yeah. Well, there's two who's, um, two ways to look at the who's. So when I figured out the who's, not the how, is when our business really took off because you can't do it all. And people have different behavioral profiles. Like I would be a horrible operations person. And so finding that, that great talent, but let me back up for a second. So the first two is honestly yourself. So I really believe like you got to look at it and say, who do I need to be in order to create this? How do I need to show up? So the who's, we teach this a lot, even to our agents. Um, I'll ask them, I'll say, okay, how much money do you want to make? And every single person brand new coming in says a minimum of six figures. Like that's their number, a hundred grand, right? And I'll ask them like, okay, who do you know that makes a hundred thousand dollars? How do they show up? Are they working full time? Do they, are they skilled in their trade? Do they dress professionally? Like whatever that is. Right. And so it really comes back to like, who do they need to be in order to make the income levels? And it's the same with you and I, who do I need to be to run an eight figure operation? Like it's completely different than the realtor that's selling one or two homes a month or five homes a month, right? So your identity of who you are, take that gut check, first of all. The second on the part of the who's is who do you need to be in business with? So a strong, strong talent will change your entire world. Like I was used to, I just hired a new operations person. She's been with us for about a year. Oh my God. She has been the biggest game changer ever. And I remember when I first hired her, I wasn't really hearing from her. And I was like, I would go like a day or a day and a half without hearing from her. I'm like, are you okay? And she's like, Oh yeah, let me tell you what. And she lists out all the things that she had done. And it was because she was resourceful and like executing at the highest level. And I just wasn't, I was used to the talent that got me to where I was at, but not going to take me to that next level. Right. So the who's of who do you need to be in business with that can shift that same with, so right now I've got a great director of ops. I've got a great lead ISA and I have a fantastic director of sales and they all have what they're obsessed about and combined we're freaking going for it. So I would tell you guys like get very purposeful about who you're going to get in business with, but you have to be the person that they're going to be attracted to. Yeah. And know who you are. I would recommend the book rocket fuel if you haven't read that so that you know who you are and who it is you need to attract into your business. Mm -hmm. So spring this year, you guys are going from 500 transactions to a thousand transactions. Yes. How do you, how do you double your business at that size? If you've been enjoying grit, please help us continue to grow the channel by leaving a five-star review and sharing it with a friend. Now back to grit. So we have everything in place to, to do that. So at this point it's agent count. So we're going from 35 to 40 agents to 90. We honestly 90 by July. So today is April 5th. Um, so our intention is to get to 90 by July. We use, a we have an EOS a consultant we meet with every quarter and we set a goal that by June 7th, we would have 75 agents and we're on pace to do that. So really it's about adding the agents. We admin staff wise, um, we run a very large international team uh, virtual. And so we probably will have to add a few more there, but, and then lead flow is going to be us again, making some educated decisions on the back end of uh, CSU. We've just increased our lead flow to support it as well as hired two more ISAs. And so truthfully, it's going to come down to agent count. So, so the teams, absolutely agent count is how you're going to scale your business. The teams that have the biggest problems doing that though, actually come to me. I know this because uh, they don't have the systems in place to go from 500 to a thousand. That's a very difficult jump. So you talked about, you have these VAs, you, you run this VA business. How does a VA just jump into your business and be able to get things done? Like how get into the workflows and stuff like that. Yeah. So we go through, we hire um, and train. So one of the biggest mistakes I think a lot of people make is they hire a VA and expect them to come trained or they expect them to just know. And I always say like, if I were to hire you, Brian, and put you like in this position, you would sit in the desk next to me for at least two weeks and you'd be asking me questions and, you know, and it wouldn't be annoying. And so we have to do the same with our VA. So we train them heavily for two weeks, but to what you're asking me is, we have it all built out, the full training library with videos and links of how to do step-by-step. Step. We have them on Zoom 
for two weeks, literally. Um, and we meet with them twice a day, like a team huddle, but how they know their workflow is everything's in CSU. So we use the back end of CSU for all of our transaction management, all of our ROI reports, all of our agent on and offboarding out of the um, agent, out of the recruiting platform. And it is built out like from start to finish with triggers and who's supposed to do it and the links on how to do it and whatnot. And so honestly, anybody could come in at this point and just take it. And it's a step-by-step how to do it. So we have been very purposeful about documenting everything and using CSU for that. And then we'll just keep on adding in more talent as we go. The biggest thing I think I see, Brian, people do is they scale, but their expenses go through the roof. And especially right now in the U.S., like talent acquisition is expensive. People need to make the money. And so us being able to run a large virtual team has been one of the key factors for us keeping our overhead low. Yeah, I remember... I mean, this was back when losing an agent was a stressful thing for you, but I remember when it was a stressful thing for you to lose, let's just say your TC, right? Mm -hmm. To train a new TC, if you don't have those systems in place is very difficult. If you have those systems in place, you can plug somebody in and they can just take over working out that task list. So make sure you guys get the systems in place. Yeah. So we run, um, we run one TC that's licensed in the state of Utah. And then she does anything that takes the license paperwork, like to write an addendum or whatnot, but then the rest of it's a virtual team. And that's how we, uh, she can easily, like we had a slow week that had like 25 deals come in. She said, she's like, it just feels so slow. I'm like, Alyssa, 25 deals in a week isn't necessarily slow, but she's just got the VA and CSU is so dialed that is just systematic for her. Yeah. And for me, I I see that because I see people struggle with this all the time. And so just make sure you guys have those systems in place. Spring, you went to real about nine months ago. Best decision I've ever made. So like for me, standing on the sideline, watching you, you've really become a different level of leader. I don't know what it is about making that move, but it elevated you like in such a large way. And I would call it brand agnostic, right? You just put on this huge event, 150 team leaders in Mexico with people from all different brands speaking, people from all different brands attending. Mm -hmm. So like, what is it that, what was the shift when you made that move to, really elevate who you are as a person, because you said the first who you need to work on is yourself. And I, I think that's really when your, your self image said, Hey, this is who I am. And, uh, really you're at a, you're at a different level now. Oh, well, that could be good and bad. Um, yeah. So, um, so let's rewind a little bit. So I had a, I've had a large team in Utah for a long time And two years ago, I left Keller Williams and said, I'm going to start my own brokerage. And when I started my own brokerage, I had the thought of like, hey, when the agent leaves the team, they can come work at my brokerage, right? And when I got into it, my coach was like, hey, Spring, that's great. But if you're going to do this, why don't you really do it? Go hire a recruiter, go go make this into a real thing. And so we went and hired 120 agents in nine months for the brokerage, not the team for the brokerage, which was fantastic. But as I started diving into it, I'm like, okay, wait a minute. If we can do this here, like, could we scale it outside of our 20 mile radius, like our bubble? Right. And so it's got my mind thinking. And so I never had really thought of myself as somebody to go um, attract and stuff. And how we were attracting was we were creating massive value. We were doing cool events, good training, like just different than what you would get a typical brokerage. So I was like, let's go do this nationally. So I think the confidence of doing that on a small scale made me feel like we could do it on a larger scale. That was one part of it. The other component of it is once I got into real, my conversations changed. So the really cool thing in the real or EXP or wherever, I don't care. Um, I love the model. So like, I, I just think that the model is fantastic. And part of it is because 
it's no longer you're having conversations again with the people in your backyard. You're having conversations with agents across the country. You're collaborating. You're talking about how you can grow. And so I think that a little bit of that shift came, Brian, is like, you see this, I'm on the phone all day long with agents from across the country that are doing cool things. Like literally my phone this morning is blowing up of 12 messages since we've been on here of these agents are Denver, Vegas, Calgary, uh, another Vegas, like, and they're like huge team owners doing hundred million, 200, $300 million of like, uh, we're all getting on a zoom this morning. So a little bit of the power and proximity of, of the conversation just changes because now we're all in alignment and business together. We're like, how do we go create an event in Mexico? How do we go put on an event in Denver? Let's go to Vegas and stuff. And so when you get, they say who you surround yourself matters. And I just truly believe that. And I just think when you get in the right circles, it just starts to happen. So you started bringing tremendous value when you had your local brokerage And then I remember you, well, well, why don't you share how much money did you make (laughs) that year from your brokerage, not from your team? Well, after I paid for rent and staff and a broker, like I netted maybe like 10 grand. Yeah. So, so you realized again, it was the first year. So, I mean, I probably would have like kept on going. So to give all brokers a little bit of a fair shot, I probably would have made like netted the next year, maybe a hundred grand. And I had to have 200 agents to do that. So it was not crazy profitable in any capacity. But, but I think the biggest thing you learned and you, you hit on this, but it was bringing value. Oh yeah. And you said, I'm going to bring value to, to everyone across the country. So anyway, it's been, it's been fun to see that. So now you've started this new coaching company spring. Tell us about scale up. Yeah. I'm super proud of it. You guys. So, um, scale up is like our initial product. It really is for a team that's in that messy middle or a team that just wants to scale. So it's 12 weeks. Um, it comes with five one-on-one sessions with the mindset coach that actually, um, one of the coaches in there is my personal coach, because a lot of what's keeping you held back is, is you, right? So I wanted to include that. And then it's just 12 weeks of all the content from agent attraction, exactly how we're doing it with systems you want to have from virtual assistants, how you scale a ton of uh, CSU, core metrics, agent one-on-ones, like everything you need to scale up. But the way that I structured it, right, which I really am enjoying right now is we recorded the modules and then each week it releases a new module with homework. And, um, but the cool thing about it is, is then after that, like I get on a call that you can ask me any questions because originally when we started it, I was just regurgitating the information and there wasn't a lot of time for Q and a. So I'm like, why don't we film the stuff that I'm saying over and over and over, and then they can get on and actually ask me true questions. So actually after this is my coaching call and I have a email with like 15 questions that people have submitted that they want answered. So I'm proud of it. It's cool. I'm enjoying it. And it's just the beginning. So. Cool. So spring is jumping into that in nine minutes. She jumped in here with me at 8 AM before she starts that at 9 AM. If you guys want to get a taste of her day. So spring, we only have a few minutes left. Tell me what is it that motivates you the most today? Mm, I think for me, progress equals happiness. Um, I just know like if I'm, uh, if I'm creating something, it's fun. And so it's really fun right now to see the impact I'm having in people's lives and including mine. Like I won't be shy about it. Like between the team cranking out a thousand transactions and real, my real network um, in the last nine months is almost 700 agents to we own the coaching and we own title, like all of it. It's just fun. So it's fun to see like what we can create. Um, but it's also really cool. There's a lot of people in my orbit that their lives are changing from the things that we're doing. And that's probably what lights me up the most. Okay. Awesome. I love it. And it's fun to see you lit up. Uh, it, it lights me up to see that. So you mentioned something in that answer you said, and we have our title company. Do you want to talk at all about your title company? What about it? Well, I just think that, um, I mean, I think as team owners, oh, that's a new, that's a trend 
is you're getting into the ancillary space, mortgage, title, insurance, all of that. And also even home services, because uh, the realtor really directs is that front line and creates that relationship. So we have a joint venture here in Utah. It's been a great partnership. Um, it's not necessarily about the financial. I mean, I love it, but it is, it's a little bit about even controlling that consumer experience of like, when we have it all in our ecosystem, it creates a really cool transaction for the consumer. And so, um, it, we've had it for about a year. I'm proud of it. Like we're doing great. And next step is going to be mortgage. So, yeah. Yeah. So spring mentioned all home services. So another thing that CSU rolled out which is going to play a role in that is we just last week rolled out a client portal that will play a role in these new client services. So anyway, it's fun to fun to have spring as a partner that we can not only live life together, but uh, grow our businesses together. So spring, is there any last words of advice that you want to share before we, before we wrap up? I would just say like, I think in real estate, we overcomplicate this and it's really, um, it's not difficult to, if you can create it into anything you want and there's not a right or wrong. I think we get in this like rat race of you have to have more and more and more. Like if you're happy being the agent that's selling however many homes and it's fulfilling to you, then that's amazing. Right. And if you're great running a small team and you're like, this is where it's at, that's great. And if you want to have a huge team like us, that's fantastic. So my piece of advice is just like, find where you want to be. Um, I would say to you though, like more doesn't need to be more work. So if you do want to get to that point where you're like, okay, I want to have a solid business. Like I don't want to have to be in somebody's uh, kitchen every day. I'm sick of uh, wondering if the agent turnover is going to destroy my business. Like just all of it, just putting a few systems in place and having more agents and more creates more stability, more predictability, more freedom more passion, like you can have it all if you want it. I know you guys recruited a ton of agents last month, spring. What's your agent count on your team now? Good question. So we recruited 16 last month. So we haven't onboarded them all. We take them through um, what's called Hello Week, where we have them come in for the week and um, experience what it's like to be on the team. We give them a few things that they have to do to just see how they show up. We know if you can't show up week one, alive, excited, full of energy and doing your thing, then you're not going to, he's laughing. Cause that's what I say to my kids. Mm-hmm. They laugh. So point of it is, is we had like 42, I think. And then we had just recorded, recruited 16. We'll see how many of them make it through hello week. Our intention is 20 to 25 a month. So it's game time, Brian. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. You guys see it's, it's the way you think, the way you lead and who you show up as, as a person is going to determine everything you're doing. So that's why I wanted to have spring on here today. Last thing I want to say. So we do a combined event. Brian and I have a combined event. It's a CSU mastery workshop two days. He talked about it earlier. I think our next one's in June. I saw the June first- 20th. I saw the first ticket sales coming in yesterday. So if you guys want to come, we'd love to have you. Uh, it's, it's pretty powerful, but you get to see like literally inside scoop, like the, you do a mastermind with the CSU team. And last time, I think we had like 50 teams here yeah. from across the country. And so it's a cool way to network with teams across the country coming in, but then you'll spend a day and a half in my office. So you'll see a morning huddles, how we run team meeting, how exactly how we do one-on-ones agent attraction. Like it's, it's a cool experience. Like one of the shifts in my whole entire identity and business is when I went and shadowed other people's offices and I'm like, that's how they're doing that. I can do that. And so just being able to come in, in that environment, um, I would recommend everybody take advantage of it. So yeah, you don't, you don't even have to be a CSU team to come to that, but uh, you'll, you'll get to see a lot about how to scale your business. Mm-hmm. How do people get a hold of you, Spring? I know you've got to jump out. So you have one minute to let people know what's the best way to get to reach you. Honestly, this sounds crazy, but Instagram, Spring, B-E-N-G-T-Z-E-N. And I only said that for Brian, because when we go to my last name is Benson and it's spelled ridiculous. <laughs> and he's like, why don't you just say your last name is B-E-N-G-T? So instead of Benson, anyway, um, but honestly, Instagram just seems to put in Spring B and it will start pulling up. Uh, cause I actually look at my DMs. You can email me too, or, um, my website will be finished at springb.com. 
any of them is great. So, so spring bee, if you guys just look for spring bee, you should find spring bee. Yep. So you'll find okay. me. Yep. Thanks, babe. Thank you for joining me on the show. Uh, loved hearing it and love just uh, love seeing your growth. So super proud of you. I'm proud of you. To the moon. Let's go. <laughs> all right. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you all next week. Bye, guys. Thank you for joining us on our podcast. If you have an interest in a free seven-day trial of Sisu, go to sisu.co. S-I-S-U dot C-O. Make sure that you use the coupon code GRIT, that's G-R-I-T, to waive all your set of fees and receive a 10% discount on your subscription. If you enjoyed listening to this podcast and want to subscribe, search GRIT, the Real Estate Growth Mindset on iTunes, Spotify, or Podbean. And with that, we'll catch you next time. Take care.